Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. If you're here for a repeat time, three, four times, thank you so much for coming back and painting and thanks for getting creative at home. In today's painting, we are going to be painting these really cool dragons. And this particular video is going to be a bit more for my beginner painters um, that have had maybe painted one or two before this. And you're going to get kind of comfortable with what I call wet on wet blending. So this is a great place to kind of practice your blending. Um, and we're going to break it up into a couple of sections. So you'll be repeating your skills a couple of times as we go through this painting. So it's excellent practice. And you know, who doesn't love a dragon? Um, with this one and all my videos on my channel, if you feel like switching out colors, maybe you want to make your dragon a different color or your background a different color, please go ahead and do that. You have full permission to switch up and change colors. So what you're going to see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit is everything that you need for this particular painting. So grab uh, your extra supplies or whatever it is that you need to complete this painting and then pick the video back up where you left off. Another thing that you're going to see is what I call a traceable and there's a link in the description box below. And that traceable is a way for you to get your initial image on your canvas before you even start painting. And for my beginner painters, um, it's a really nice way to take out some of those beginning stress and frustration of painting at home. So check out the link for the traceable and check out there's a video on how to transfer your traceable. If you do not want to use uh, the traceable, you can pause the video um, after the outlines are done and draw what you see on the screen and then kind of move into painting. So there's always options and all of these are just to kind of get you more comfortable with your tools and the skills that you're developing. As you get more comfortable with your painting skills and painting at home and you're ready to kind of take your skills to the next level, I want you to check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com. And on there, I have my intro to knife, palette knife painting class. I do have my featured paint your pet class. And with that, it is geared towards first time and beginner painters and it's gonna make your current skills even better. So like I said, when you're ready to check out the next level um, and push yourself, go ahead and check out my online school. And it's a lot of fun. Many, many of my students over the last, oh my gosh, seven years have really impressed themselves with what they've painted when they painted their pets. So definitely check that out. Um, as always, make sure you enjoy the process, have fun, relax. It's just painting. It's not the end of the world. And you're already successful just by attempting uh, right now at home. So keep painting, keep getting more comfortable and uh, your life will be a little bit better for it. So I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. All right guys, this is gonna be another fun painting. So gather all your supplies, make sure you turn on your favorite music and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. So for this painting, once you have your traceable transferred to your canvas, I do want you to go over those lines um, and you've got two options. And I do recommend using option number one, which is using your pointy brush and black paint. I want you to go over all those lines that you transferred to your canvas. And as you're doing this, I want you to play with the pressure of your brush. Light pressure is going to create a skinny line. A little bit more pressure is going to create a wider line. And you may have a variety of both. That's okay, because you will repeat this process a little bit later on with wider lines. So right now, you're just getting kind of comfortable with your brush pressure and starting to get comfortable with your paint. If you are really short on time, you can do this step for option number two. You can use a Sharpie marker. And you're just going to go over all those lines. And again, I do recommend option number one just for the pure practice of uh, getting comfortable with the brush. Once you're done, you're going to be moving into your background. And if you did use the paint option number one, I do want you to fully let your black paint dry before you move on to painting your background. 
And in this one, I'm gonna paint a nice teal background. And you can see I'm using kind of the medium flat brush or the large flat brush. And we're gonna be mixing teal and white. And it can be any shade that you want it to be. If you wanna go a little darker or lighter, or if you even wanna switch out to a completely different color, feel free to do that. So see, you, you can see here that I actually added more white so I could get to a light teal. And you've got a few brush strokes to try. And try all three of them, and whichever one that you're feeling a little more comfortable with, stick with that one as you fill in the space. So you've got the kind of that wide brush stroke, a skinny brush stroke, or making X marks. And again, just find your comfort level with your tools and applying the paint. And the more that you paint, the more comfortable the process gets. And again, you're going to be going from the black lines of your design of your dragon to the edges of the canvas. And if you are using student grade paint, I do recommend that you apply it a little bit thicker. You'll have a bit more of an opaque uh, uh, coverage if you apply it a little thicker, or you can do two coats. So whatever you feel like doing as you paint your background. If you happen to overlap those black lines and maybe paint your background on the inside of your dragon, do not freak out. Um, you let the paint dry and you can paint right on top of it again when we move into the colors of the dragon. So with acrylic paint, just relax, have fun. I want you to pretend like you're an adult kindergartner right now and just enjoy the process of painting. If you're holding your breath, please take a deep breath. It does not help you to hold your breath when you're painting. And in fact, if you if this you feel like you're doing this a lot, um, I want you to exhale as you touch the canvas with your brush. And that kind of keeps you so you're not holding your breath and it's not, it helps so you don't have tense muscles. And again, it's just painting. So don't take this super serious, just have fun. And as you're mixing your background color, if you have to mix it two or three times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every time. We're going to do a little wet on wet blending in a minute and kind of change the shade of the background. All right, so here you can see I grabbed some white, slapped it on top, right on top of the background, wiped my brush off, and then I went back and moved my brush on top of that white. And this is the wet on wet blending method. Because your background's wet and you're introducing new wet paint, um, you can do a little bit of blending and mixing. It was this, basically the same thing that you did to make your initial color um, on the plate, but now you're just gonna do it on your background instead. And you can see where I grabbed the direct teal, placed it towards the bottom of the canvas, and this creates a darker area. But again, doing this while the background is wet so we can soften the transition and blend the two colors. And you may notice that sometimes I wipe my brush off. If you get a lot of buildup on your paint, um, sometimes it's easier just wipe your brush off and then go back to using light pressure and blending the two colors. If you are inclined to use your fingers to blend these colors, go right ahead and do that. It's very therapeutic to do some finger painting. And if you end up kind of losing the color, just reapply, maybe a little bit thicker, maybe a few less movements of your brush stroke to get a darker area. And again, this gets more comfortable the more that you do it. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna be moving into painting the inside of our dragon. So you can see I'm starting with white. We're gonna add a touch of purple to it to make a light lavender. And we are going a bit more on the light side. Um, so it may be a little hard to tell that I actually have a light lavender on the screen, but we're just going super light and then we're gonna put some darker lavender, darker purple on top of this. And we're gonna be building on that wet on wet blending concept. So we're gonna kind of fill in the wing, then we'll put some darker purple on it, then we'll move into the body of our dragon. But by doing this in kind of small sections, it allows to make sure that our um, first layer of paint is still wet. And then when we introduce the second color in there, uh, we can blend it in there just like we did the background. 
So here you can see I grabbed a touch of purple, not a whole lot, a little bit goes a long way, and just kind of placing marks inside the wing. Maybe you need to grab a little bit more purple, and you'll notice that I kind of get those marks in there, I wipe the brush off, and then I go back and do some blending. And again, as you're doing your wet on wet blending, kind of keeping a light pressure so you don't have too many brush strokes that show up and softening that transition between your first lighter color that you applied and then blending that darker color into it. And this is one of the most fun things about painting. And I am trying to keep the perimeter, the edge of the wing, kind of pretty light. So I'm moving my brush strokes in the opposite direction so that way I'm not touching that white paint on the edge of the wing and keeping that pretty, or that light lavender on the edge of the wing and keeping it the same color. So the more that you paint, the more you will gain brush control and comfort with your tools. So here I actually grabbed some white paint to blend right into that super light lavender. And again, kind of keeping it on the edge, thinking about it as a highlight the lightest area and it's okay if you need to kind of go back and forth between grabbing your darker color or the lighter color and as you get into the darker areas that you want just moving your brush on top of the darker areas uh, just one or two times and with very light pressure will keep that darkness All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to do the same thing, making that super, super light lavender. And if it's a little bit different than what you made a moment ago, that's okay. And we're going to be filling in the body of our dragon. And as you're painting your dragon, maybe think about what are you going to name your dragon? What kind of personality does your dragon have? And if you overlap some of these black lines, totally okay. When we get into the belly with all those scales, you will see that I overlap all those black lines. Um, but because we're using such a light color, we can still see, through, see those black lines through the light color. And if you need to move and switch down to one of the, the small pointy brush, feel free to use the brush that you need to use. And again, this is just painting. It does not have to be picture perfect. You're just, the process of painting is very therapeutic and something that is good for you. There you go. You can see that I painted right over some of those lines. Now switching back to that small pointy brush and grabbing some darker purple. You can see I'm just mixing it a little bit with the white. And we're gonna be placing this in a few areas and then we'll wipe our brush off and go back and blend them in. So again, you're just, we're building the same skill and doing it multiple times so that way you get a lot of comfort with it. And relax, you're doing great. You're strengthening your power of observation as you see where I place something and then you kind of mimic that as close to your capacity on your own painting. And you can see where I wiped the brush off and now I'm going back to where I put the darker purple and with light pressure, blending it into that base uh, light lavender that we put on a moment ago. You're doing great. If you need to go back and grab that original light lavender color go right ahead you'll realize that this wet on wet blending is a lot of a back and forth process sometimes you put the darker color on there and blend and then sometimes you have to go back and put the lighter color on and blend um, there's not a exact way to paint there are many many ways to paint and apply uh, paint to your canvas here we go using a little bit of white doing the same thing blending it in and giving a hint of a highlight on that eyebrow. But you're doing great. And a lot of stuff that you're learning today, like I said, will show up 
and be easier the next time that you go to paint. And again, trust your instincts. If you're inclined to do something that I do not do, go right ahead and do it. That's how you're going to learn. And if you end up not liking it later, just let the paint dry and paint on top of it again and do something different. I tell all my students the only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. So just the fact that you're at home going through this process, you're already successful. So making that light lavender again, we're going to add it to the horns. And again, if you want these to be a different color, feel free to switch out and use a different color. Same, grabbing a little bit more of that dark purple, putting it on the bottom to the left hand side and the bottom of the horns. Again, kind of creating that shadow and then wiping the brush off and blending that into the horns. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. All right, so now we're making kind of a medium purple. And we're going to be moving to the spine or the um, mane of our, the dragon. And again, if you prefer a different color, maybe orange or green or red, feel free to switch out the color for the spine of your dragon. So again, using that medium purple, filling in that last space on the spine of our dragon before we move into the underbelly. And if you want to over accentuate some of those uh, points, feel free to do that. Make this dragon your own. Move it in with the dark purple again placing where we want our shadow lines to be then we'll wipe off the brush and blend them into that medium purple so like i said you're just taking the same skill of wet on wet blending and we're doing it in multiple areas so that way you're gaining more comfortable with blending your colors
All right, so now we're going in with the direct purple, that straight purple, and we're going to fill in kind of, not even sure what you would call those on the dragon, but the side, side face flare pieces, <laughs> horns, I'm not quite sure, spikes, what they would be. So you can call them whatever you want them to be on your dragon. But we're using that straight uh, purple paint, that dark purple paint, and filling those in. Again, using kind of the student grade paint, I am applying it a little bit thicker, kind of globbing it on, so we have a bit more of an opaque coverage. And just painting right over those black lines. Kind of, a, yeah, I guess we'll call it the side face flare pieces. I'm just kind of filling that space in. If you need to add an extra horn, feel free. Going over to the eye, kind of the corners of the eye, I'm putting that dark purple, a little bit more where the nostril is. And go ahead, take pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to move over to white paint and a tiny amount of yellow. We're going to do for the, the scales on the underbelly. We're going to use a super light yellow and basically fill that whole space in. You see that I'm going right on top of those lines. Um, Go ahead and do that on your own. Uh, we will still will be able to see some of those black lines shine through the yellow paint and we will utilize that as we put some shading on top of this base color. But we're still implementing that wet on wet blending where we're putting this base of light yellow and then we'll put some darker shading on top of this. So once you've got the main underbelly filled in, we are almost at what we call our underpainting where there's no canvas space showing. We're going to be grabbing that pure yellow paint, the direct yellow paint. And if you look at each scale, um, it's a little bit skinnier at the top of the scale to where it's a little bit wider and fatter at the bottom of the scale. We're going to be putting this yellow paint um, on the skinny portion, the top portion of each scale. And it's basically going to kind of be right underneath the curve of the scale above it. And this just indicates and gives a little bit more um, shadow, a little bit of darkness as the scales are um, kind of layered on top of each other. You don't have to hit every single one, so don't stress about trying to get every single scale in there. If you get 90% of the scales with this darker um, yellow on there it gives a great illusion so it doesn't have to be everything all right and then i did want a yellow eye on this dragon so filling in the yellow around that black pupil and if you happen to paint over the black pupil or that white dot that's kind of half on the black pupil don't worry you can add it in in a later state and then my dragon has teeth, so I am using the yellow to add teeth. All right. Pause the video, take your progress photo. You've done a great job. We're actually gonna move back to black paint and the small pointy brush, and we're gonna go back over all those outlines again. And as you do this one, I want you to kind of use medium pressure because I do wanna go for a bit of a whiter line. I want your line to overlap your background 
and overlap the colors of your dragon. And by doing this kind of solid black line, it gives it a bit more of a pop art feel. Um, and again, it's optional. If you like your dragon as is, you don't have to do this step. Or if you feel like switching out colors, maybe doing a red outline or a turquoise outline or even yellow, um, feel free to switch out colors for whatever you like. And again, as you're doing this, remember to breathe. It does not help when you're doing outlines to hold your breath. And again, I found it beneficial if you exhale as your brush touches the canvas, you're less tense um, when you do that. So try a few different ways. Take your time as you're doing your black outlines. This is not a race. And again, just enjoy the fact that you're focusing on something creative and you're not stressing out about work or home or uh, politics or family drama. You're just painting. That's it. All right, and as you get into the scales on the underbelly, take your time. Remember to breathe um, using that light pressure on the brush and just the tips of the brush will help create a bit of a skinnier line. And every now and then you may realize that you have a lot of paint on your brush. Feel free to wipe it off and that kind of brings the bristles back together to make a point. Um, so as you're working on the scales, kind of take a look at your brush and see uh, the condition of your bristles. And if you need to clean it off to bring the bristles closer together, go ahead and do that. You're doing a great job. I'm so proud of you for painting at home. All right, and if you did go over that black pupil, just reapply it and we'll do that white dot in a moment. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. Great job. All right, so now we're gonna grab white paint. We're gonna redo that catch light in the eye if you ended up painting over it. It's a little dot that's half on that black pupil, half on the eye color. And your dragon should be dry with its paint by now. So we're gonna be taking that pure white and just going in a few select areas and adding a highlight value, a lighter value to our dragon. So here you're just gonna utilize your power of observation as you notice where I place something I want you to place it in the same general area. And again, every couple of brush strokes with the white, grab more paint, because you may get kind of in a groove of applying the white, um, the white paint, but if you, unless you keep reloading your brush, um, your efforts will be kind of worthless uh, if you don't keep adding paint to your brush. So every couple of brush strokes, grab more white paint. And it is kind of cool when you put that white on top of those darker colors, um, how it just kind of makes it pop and pull forward. So as an artist, as a painter, you are kind of a magician because you're creating illusion on a flat surface. You're doing a great job. I hope you're enjoying the process. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. All right, we're gonna go back to yellow paint and we're using that pure yellow paint and I'm just putting it in a few areas um, just to kind of break up the space. I do like the limited palette that we used for this using teal, purple, and yellow. We just used three colors with purple and yellow being uh, complementing colors. So it helps to bring a dynamic painting when you do use complementing colors. All right, and if you're inclined to put yellow paint or another color somewhere I do not, go ahead and do that.
And again, because they're complementing colors, that yellow on top of the purple just gives an awesome contrast. And something I enjoy looking at, actually. <laughs> Hopefully you like it too. If you wanted to throw some orange in there, that would be a nice complement to the teal. And anything extra that you want to add to your dragon painting, please do that. Go right ahead. This is your dragon. And uh, send me a picture of what you do. Anything extra, or if you follow the video exactly as is, send me a picture. I do like to see what they look like. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. And here, these are optional steps from here on out. I am going into the blue and adding another color to our limited color palette. And just kind of putting these where the shadow would be and it gives just one other color that pops. Um, in my personal artwork, I actually like using a lot of crazy random colors. So I brought it into some of my paintings that I teach here. So like I said a moment ago, if you do not want to add this blue, you don't have to. If you want to add another color, if you want to do anything extra to your painting, um, get creative. Feel free to do what you need to do and trust your instincts. I'm so glad you painted today. I'm so proud of you for taking time out of your day to go and do something creative and even more importantly, spending some time with me. So I know there's a lot of videos that you can choose. I'm glad you enjoy mine. So please try to find a creative outlet on a monthly basis for yourself. And uh, thanks for painting with me. Have a great day. Cheers. And again, this step is optional. I couldn't help myself and had to add another color. So I went in with orange, a nice complement to the teal. And again, just kind of put this in some random places, completely optional. You do not have to do it if you do not want to. If you want to use a different color like red or green, you can do that too. And if anything that you need to go back and adjust or add, go right ahead and do that. So proud of you guys for painting today. Really hope you enjoyed the process and I do look forward to painting with you again in the future. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really cool. I hope your dragons look awesome. Um, as you are uploading these to social media, please tag me at paint with lovejoy or hashtag paint with lovejoy or email them to me, uh, paint with lovejoy at gmail.com. I can't stress enough how excited I get when I see your pictures and I see that you're painting at home and it gives me a lot of motivation to continue to make these videos. So let me know how you're doing. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, things you would like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment and let me know. Um, I look through all of those and I try to answer comments and questions uh, usually twice a day, in the morning and evening. And again, remember when you're ready, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com and uh, check it out. There's kits, there's more in-depth classes, all the YouTube videos are on there but please keep painting at home. You're doing a great job. Uh, thanks again so much for painting with me. Really appreciate taking time out of your day and you're spending it with me. So great job for painting and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Yeah.